Um, all right, so tonight we're here, we're gonna talk a little bit about differentiating your instruction. And um, a lot of the tools, as I was kind of putting this together over the last week or so, a lot of the tools that I've been, uh, that I've been, that I've been uh, putting into this, um, a lot of them are uh, tech-based. So I hope you don't mind, and I, um, some of them you can just use, you know, uh, something simple like your, you know, your phone, or maybe if you just have an iPad or a computer, uh, and then others are, um, others are, um, you know, you could use those if you have a whole class set of iPads or a class set of uh, Chromebooks or things like that. So you don't need those things, but I, but I did notice as I was doing this, I'm like, oh, I guess I use technology a lot more in differentiating than I, than I thought. Um, so uh, I do want to get started right away. I'll um, go ahead and I'll show you the agenda for tonight. Uh, first of all, we'll uh, we'll do an introduction. I actually don't have a poll tonight. I'm not sure why I put that in there. But uh, introductions. Um, if you just want to uh, throw in the chat over on the side what grade level you teach, that'd be perfect. Um, after that, we will uh, talk a little bit about a couple of sites. Now, um, some of these things you probably know already because um, some of them are very common and a lot of people are using them. Um, but I do just want to quickly um, review for maybe those who don't. Um, so we'll go over a couple of sites. And then after that, we will uh, we'll talk about a couple of apps uh, that I use that I've been using for the last couple of years. Um, after that, we'll talk about some Google extensions and apps. Uh, so if you have Chromebooks or devices of some sort that the kids are, are on, um, you could um, you could you could use these extensions and apps in Chrome in Google Chrome. Um, with that being said, some of these, if you don't have Chromebooks or if you don't have devices for your kids, that's okay because some of these you could definitely uh, use yourself. And, and even if you have, you know, a student working at your computer or um, something like that, these will definitely be helpful. Um, and I will say, I know um, Rebecca, I know you um, you teach uh, special ed, and the one thing that I'm that I'm thinking here is. In the last couple of years, um, in my in my classroom, I've had a lot of my kids actually these these uh, extensions and these apps. We've been and um, yeah, the iPad apps as well. We've been putting those on uh, the kids' IEPs. Um, so some of these they're they're good for you know they're good for the entire class, but they're definitely you know they're they're fantastic for for those kids who need it um, the most. Um, and, and like I said, I, we we put those on IEPs. So. Um, and then we'll uh, we'll do some questions at the end. So I have a lot to get through. I'm gonna the first couple of things I'll kind of I'll go through quickly because I think um, that most of us probably knows know about the first couple here, the couple of sites. So let me uh, let me flip screens here, and I'm gonna jump over to let's see my desktop. Okay. All right. So first of all, we'll talk about uh, Newzella. Um, so I, I've, I've actually, in the past, I think Newzella, that's actually how the official site, that's how they say it. I have heard a lot of people recently calling it NewsLA, so whatever way you say it, but I think officially it is Newzella. Um, so Newzella is a site. Um, you know what? If you've used this before, just give me a little, uh, just, just let me know in the chat that if you, if you have. If you haven't, that's okay, too. Um, but, uh, but let me just quickly talk about Newzella. Newzella is a website. It is free. There is a, um, there's a paid version as well. Um, and they've actually in the last year or so they've come out with that school edition too. Um, so the school edition, um, you know, they, you could purchase the, the, the pro plan, but your entire district would have access or, or whatever number of licenses your school uh, does purchase. I've always used the, um, the free, the free version. And it's always, you know, it's always done exactly what I need it to do. So I've never done the pro version uh, before. However, uh, that is an option too. So, um, so, okay, so Newzella, if for those of you who may not know what it is, um, this is a website where there's leveled reading um, and, and usually current events. Um, so for example, this is what the site looks like. You do need to sign up for an account, uh, first of all, oh, the first time you go there. Um, and then what you'll see is when you log in, there is a library of all these different articles, and a lot of them are, you know, newer things that are happening. So those really super current events. Um, but then there's some other things in there as well. So there's there um, there's uh, different topics. So you can see this one that says kids, health, science, arts, and law. So there's a bunch of different um, uh, places where you can go to get some articles. Um, so uh, for, let me show you. Let me just click on this one. So teenagers use tech devices to cheat on tests at school. Survey finds. <laughs> Well, thankfully, uh, my third graders have not done that. So uh, let's see here. Okay. All right. So uh, let me uh, pull this down. Okay. So here's the article. And you'll notice up in the right-hand corner over here, it says uh, 580L. So that is the Lexile of the article. Notice if you click on that, there's a few different, there's a few different ones there. Um, so this is something that you can assign to students. You can actually put kids in here. 
um, into the uh, system and have them assigned to your class. And then you can assign kids those, those articles. Now, in the last couple of years, I would say um, I, I find this works a lot better and the kids enjoy it more. Um, if I'm giving them, you know, like an article of the day and I actually let them choose the article that they, that they want to read. Um, there is a quiz that goes along with it as well. So they're all differentiated. And what you'll notice as you scroll through the different Lexiles is, so this one is 580, uh, the Lexile is 580. And you'll see, um, that, um, as I flip to maybe a higher one, let's go to 1200. There's more words. Um, the vocabulary is, is, you know, much bigger. Um, the sentence uh, structure is they're all longer. So you'll notice same content for the most part. However, it will be, uh, will be just um, a little more challenging. Um, so you can see even the title changes here. So at the 580, teenagers use tech devices to cheat on uh, tests at school survey finds. In the 1200 Lexile, nearly a third of U.S. teenagers use electronics to cheat at school. So, um, and it does tell you the grade level over here as well. The word count, it gives you all the information that you need. So. This is an awesome way to differentiate, especially in reading instruction. Um, so uh, this is, um, I would say, you know, this is pretty easy. The other thing you can do over here is you can print as well. So if you want to print those articles out for the kids, you can do that. But you can also assign them um, electronic, uh, electronically as well. So um, this is News uh, Newsella. If you're interested in that, definitely go back and take a look, browse through it a little bit. And if anyone really has a lot of interest in this and has never used it before, let me know because we could always do a webinar just on Newzella. I mean, there's a lot here, especially setting up classes and um, assigning assigning those texts and things like that. So if you're interested in that, you could do the uh, Q&A just to let me know if you, if you want to go into a little more detail with that in the future. Okay. All right. So the next one uh, that I do want to talk about is the uh, Khan Academy. Okay. So let me back up a little bit here. So this is the Khan Academy. This is a website. It's just khanacademy.org. Um, and again, this one, I'm sure a lot of people have heard of it before, but the great thing about this is, um, I think it was last year they started, um, they, there's an integration into Google classroom. So for those of you who joined me for the Google classroom, um, uh, the webinar, uh, last week, this is, uh, this is, this is something else that you could do in, um, to, to differentiate your instruction for those kids using Google classroom. You don't need to use Google classroom, but that is an option. Uh, so let's say that your kids, maybe one of your kids is struggling with um, uh, factors, okay? So let's finding factors. Um, I'm just going to type in factors here. All right, so factors and multiples. All right, so then you'll see a huge list of all these videos pull up, and you can go over here, and I'm just going to pause that quickly. So a video pops up. This one is just talking about what uh, factors are, and then uh, it goes through finding all the factors of 120. So you can really search around. I mean, there's a ton of videos on here. Um, the great thing is you can do one of two things here, actually. So you can, you can in, in Khan Academy, you can set up your own class. So you can put your kids in there if you want to. Um, the other thing, like I said, that you can do if you do use Google Classroom is now you can go down to um, just underneath the video, there is a little button that says Google Classroom. So this is, this is actually really cool. So if you know, like I said, that maybe one or two of your kids or you know, a handful of kids are really struggling with, with finding the factors of 120 or whatever the topic is. You can click on Google Classroom. As long as you're signed in, um, it's gonna pull up your, your classroom. It says, choose your class. All right, well, this is the one I have. And actually, this is just kind of a, um, a dummy class. I don't really have anything in there just to kind of show you um, for testing purposes. So then it says, choose an action. So create assignment, ask a question, or make an announcement. Um, I'll, do, um, I'll do create assignment. Once you do that, I push go, and now this pulls up here for me, and I can actually describe my assignment. But I'll notice up here, this is the best part about this, is I can choose if I want this video to go to all students in Google Classroom, or if I want it just to go to specific students. Now, like I said, I don't have my entire class in here. I just have one student, actually, but um, you could once your kids are all in Google Classroom, you could assign this video just to a specific group of kids, okay? So um, there's a lot of apps, actually. There's a lot of things that, that are connected to Google Classroom where you can do this. You can go right from the Khan Academy website or you know, whatever website you're using, and you can put it into Google Classroom. There's a growing list of those. I mean, that's, and that's actually a, a wonderful thing because it's just so easy to share with individual kids, which, which is exactly what differentiation is, right? So um, that, is, uh, that is another option. So this is Khan Academy. If you haven't used it before, I would definitely suggest, you know, head over there. It is free as well. So there's no, uh, there's no fees for this one. 
Um, and there's a ton of videos out there as well. So even if this isn't something that you're going to show, you know, you're going to use in classroom, you could, you could even show these little videos in class just to, you know, to, to explain things in different ways to, um, to students. Um, even in small group, you know, if you're working with a group of kids, maybe guided reading, you can pull up a topic here and, and share it with the kids just, um, you know, so they're hearing it in a different way. All right, so that's Khan Academy. Let's move on. Um, I do want to go to a couple of apps. So the apps that I want to talk about, um, we are going to talk about um, uh, Prismo first. And uh, Prismo is definitely, um, it's a great one. We found this, I think it was actually this past school year I found this one, and I thought it was fantastic. So let me see if I can pull up my iPad, and I want to show you what this one looks like. Uh, let's see. Okay. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. So, um, Prismo, it looks like, uh, it looks like this right here. You can see it in the bottom, uh, the bottom of the screen. I don't think I can point to it for you, but, um, Prismo, it's this right here. I'm going to open that up. And, um, what you're going to see here is, um, what you're going to see is a very basic screen. Now, the great thing about this one, the great thing about this app is that, um, for those kids who are just struggling with reading and especially, you know, with my kids, Usually in reading instruction, I have a few different strategies where I'm providing kids with, you know, books at their level. Um, usually with this app, and, and we did put this on a few kids uh, on their IEPs this year, we, we put this on the IEP um, for uh, special areas. So we, we put it on for, um, we put it in for social studies, we put it in for science, and even math in some cases, the kids are using this. Although math is a little trickier because this actually, it's going to um, just give you a quick overview. You're going to um, take a picture of a text, a hard, um, um, maybe you have a worksheet or you have um, you know, some, some sort of text that you want the kids to read. Um, this app, you can take a picture of it, it scans the document, it takes all of the text off of there and then the kids can actually play it in an audio text. So like I said, I don't usually read this, uh, use this one for, for reading instruction, maybe once in a while we did, but really this one we use a lot for, for social study science, you know, those, those areas where, um, it's not, it's not reading. I just want the kids to get the information. Okay. So those content areas, it's definitely helpful. So, all right. So let me show you what, uh, what this app looks like. So there's, um, you can see on the bottom, there's that little, uh, the little camera. So I'm going to click on the camera and then notice what happens here. It pulls up, it pulls up the camera. And the first time you use it, obviously it does say something along the lines of, do you want this app to use the camera? So make sure you say yes. All right. So then and this is something that you want to make sure that you have um, the kids practice a little bit. So I am just going to go right over top of the text and they need to be like right over top of it. Okay. So if they're crooked or if it's off to the side like this, it's really not going to work all that well. They need to be really like over top of the text. Okay. All right. So now that I did that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click done in the bottom right hand corner. And now notice that this is, um, it pulls up the text. Okay. So now up in the top right hand corner of the screen, you see the little thing that says recognize. And I, I do understand there's a lot of things here. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, buttons. And like I said, my, my students who needed this, the ones that we put it on the IEP for, they got it. It just took a little bit of practice. Okay. Um, so up in the top right hand corner, you see the little word that says recognize or the little thing, uh, let's see here. There we go. Perfect. All right. So you push recognize. And then you can see that it chunks it up for you, which is actually perfect because really for the kids who need this the most, this is something that, you know, that chunking of information is, is super helpful. So it breaks it down into those different boxes. Okay, so now you will notice, and I don't know if I can find an example of this, um, some texts that you, that you scan in, actually there is an example in the first sentence there. So you can see where the actual text of the document that it was on paper, it says strike it rich. Notice that down um, on the bottom of the screen where it transcribed that it says um, in hopes to strike and then it put the slash there in place of the I. And really you can see that the text that I scanned, and I think it was italicized the way it looks. So it, it pulled it up as, um, as that um, a slash instead of, the, um, instead of the I. Okay, so once in a while you will have that happen. However, for the most part, I've never really had too much of an issue with this, okay? So um, now, um, now that I did that, I can go up to the very top of the screen and I can push the little like share button. You see that little share? This is the share button right here. And then there's a few different options here. So you can read the text aloud, export as a file, export text or copy to clipboard. I don't think I, we've ever really used those other options. The only one that my kids know how to use is that read text aloud, okay? 
So I am going to go ahead and I'll push uh, read text aloud. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to hear the sound or not, but. And now there's that little play button on the March bottom. March 4th, 1849. The Cafifomia Gold Rush is in full force. More people come to California. And okay. So then, I'm, like I said, I'm not sure if you could hear that on, on your end. I'm not sure if that was coming through. But it does read to the kids. And the other great thing is it is actually going, um, that little highlighted word, it's going along with it as well. It is a little choppy. It's not the best reading ever. But you know what? For the kids that need it the most, um, for those kids who, who maybe would have a, ordinarily they'd have a difficult time reading this, it's definitely helpful. Now, I will say this as well. This app, it is 10 bucks. Um, but because we put it on, I, it's, I think it's $9.99 in the app store. Um, but um, because we were putting it on, I, on IEPs, the school district obviously was paying for it and putting it on those iPads. Okay. Most of most classrooms in my building, they at least have, you know, one iPad or um, in some cases, the, the special ed department did have to purchase, they did purchase an iPad for the kids to use the app on. I think that actually one, one, they did that for one student because we didn't have any more iPads for that student to use specifically. But, but for the most part, even if you just have an iPad in your classroom, you know, you can, you can definitely do that with, um, uh, just have them throw that app on there for you. Um, for me, I'm the one that puts the iPad, uh, the apps on the, uh, the iPads, but you would probably just need to talk to your tech department and they can get that on there. So this is called um, Prismo, P-R-I-Z-M-O, okay? Really great one um, uh, for, for, those, for those students who just struggle with reading a little bit, but, you know, um, those, those content areas, this one really comes in handy, okay? All right, let's see. So I'm going to move on to um, Dragon Speak. This one I think is a little more common, but I do want to very briefly um, just quickly show you this one. It's in the bottom right-hand corner over here. Uh, so this one is, um, it's a speech to text. Um, this one, a lot of my kids who struggle with and uh, struggle with writing, this one is is definitely really helpful for them. So um, this app, very simple, easy screen, actually probably a lot easier than the Prismo app, but this one, um, you can see there's a little button that says tap to dictate, and I can click on that. It's picking up what I'm, um, what I'm saying, and it's going to put it up on the top of the screen. So um, you know what? Yep, it did. There we go. So um, whatever the kids are saying, you know, if they struggle with actually, you know, correct spelling, a lot of my kids use this for spelling. If, if uh, some of the kids just really struggled with those words, the ones that come to you and say, I don't know how to spell this, like every five seconds, this is actually perfect for that as well. So, um, and they can actually see, you know, it does pick up really well. Um, even, you know, you can see like apostrophes and capital letters and they can say punctuation as well. So if they're saying a sentence, they can say question mark. And then they have to pause and then they can move on. And it will put the question mark in there and not put the words question mark. So it's really good about that as well. All right. So that is uh, Dragon Dictation. That one is free. So um, that's in the App Store as well. That, that app is totally free. And I don't even think there's a paid version of that one. This one is totally free. Okay. Um, let's see. The next one I want to talk about is Chirbit. So um, I want to try to show you. Um, let, me, let me try to show you what this looks like. Um, Actually, I can show you in the app uh, as well. So this one, it is an uh, it is an iOS app. Um, iOS is, is just an Apple device, so you can use it on your iPhone. You can use it on your iPad. Um, this one is free as well. It's totally free, um, but there is a paid subscription if you want to. So if you're going to be using this one a lot, um, and you're you're gonna you're gonna have longer files, then there is a subscription fee. And I want to say the last time I checked, I think it was like four dollars a month. Um, and um, this one, I would I would say to you is um, is something that you you probably don't need to do the paid plan with. A lot of the resources that I post on Teachers Pay Teachers, I'll I'll use this app for, which I'll explain in a second. Um, so I I have a lot of files that I need to store in the app and online. Um, but just for regular use, I don't really think that you probably need any sort of paid plan. I think you'd be fine with the with the free plan. Okay. All right, so this one, again, um, this one is actually audio text as well. So a lot of my kids, and I, I use this again, I use this a lot in um, those content areas, social studies, science, um, math, I think maybe a couple of times I've used it, but really social studies and science is the time that I'm using this one. So Chirbit is, um, is audio text, but it is coming from, from me. So what I do, I'm going to open up that app for you so you can see that. And um, you can see that there's a few different buttons on here. Very simple, again. So... Um, the very first thing you would do um, when you download this app, you would need to make an account. Even if it's a free account, you still need to make an account with a username and, and password. 
Um, there's a few different options over here on the, uh, the left hand side of the screen. You can see there's the one that says record. So I'm going to go ahead and hit record. This is the screen that pops up. Now that I have this, um, there's, there's not many options. So new recording is over in the bottom left hand corner. Um, record is in the middle of the screen and then upload recording. I'm going to try it while it's connected. I, I'm not sure if it's going to work because we're in the webinar, but I'm going to try it anyways and see if it works. So I'm going to hit record and we're just going to let it play for a couple of seconds. You notice the timer right in the middle here and I'm going to stop it. And then I'm going to go ahead and over in the right hand corner, I'm going to do upload recording. So now it takes me to this screen. This screen, um, it does have the text up here so you can label this and I'm just going to write test here. Oops. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and write test. Well, on my page, it looks, it says test, but I think ours got, it looks like it's frozen. Um, so I'm going to, um, there it goes. Okay, perfect. So now down on the bottom, you can listen to it if you want to before you upload it. So it is going to upload to a website. It is the Chirbit website. So it's Chirbit, C-H-I-R-B-I-T.com. So it's going to upload it to the website. So I'm going to push post to Chirbit. Looks like it's a, running a little slow here because on my screen it says upload complete. So let's see if it pops up here in a second. Okay, all right. Well, it does look like it uploaded. There we go, perfect. So I'm going to close that out. So now I'm just gonna go over here and I'm going to share my desktop with you again. Uh, let's see, okay, all right. So now I'm going to go to chirbit.com. Oh, I had it open already. Okay. All right. So chirbit.com and you'll see that um, now uh, this is this is the pretty much the same format, you know, the same things, but th this is um, over here in the top right hand corner for usually I think it would say login for me. I'm already logged in. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to click on profile and it takes me here. Now this right here is the newest one. So it was six seconds. Yep. That's the one. Um, so now I can go ahead and I can, um, I can play that hit record and we're just going to let it and and I have that file it's an audio file now the great thing about this I want to show you is is this feature so if you scroll down underneath there's this little share button so it's this little guy right here so I'm going to click on that and now there's this little QR code so um, QR codes um, you can scan those with with uh, an iPad you can scan it with um, scan it with uh, an iPhone. You can scan it with pretty much any tablet that you have. Um, you can go ahead and I can click on that and it creates a QR code for me. Okay. So now what I do is now I have this audio text. So if you have something that you know is going to be a little challenging for kids to read, you can take this QR code, stick it on the side of that, that, you know, that text or whatever it is that you want, uh, that you want the kids to read. It's there. They can scan it and they can listen to the text they can listen to the, the audio of you reading it. So this is a, a really nice way to do that. You don't need to do a QR code. However, I would suggest that because the other thing you can do is you can actually um, do a, a link. So you can see right over here on the right-hand side, there is a link there. However, that's a little tricky for kids to type in. So um, if you have the ability to for kids to do um, a QR code, that would be perfect, okay? So let me show you what this looks like. I'm going to see if I can make my screen a little bigger because I want to show you something that my kids have done in the last couple of years. Um, let's see here. All right. So, okay. All right. So I hope that's a little bigger. I think it is. Anyways. Okay. All right. So let me, um, let me show you, um, let me show you this. I'm just going to try to pull this up. So this is a shameless plug for my book, <laughs> but one of the things that my kids have done in the last couple of years, I did this one just to show you, but one of the things that my kids have done in the last couple of years with, with picture books, some of my, some of my higher readers, some of those kids who, you know, who, who want to help me out or they, you know, they get done quickly with something. I've been asking them to, to make audio text for, for books. So what they'll do is they have an iPad. We have Sherbet on there. And then it's either you know, alone or with a few other um, students. They'll record. Then we will print out the QR code. And then we'll put it in the front of a book. So now once they scan this, they can go ahead and they can, you know, they can listen to the book. They can listen to the audio text of the book as they're... Um, they can listen to the audio text as they're following along in the story. Okay. So that's, uh, that's just uh, an idea. Um, there's a lot of ways to use this one. I have a lot of my resources that I put on teachers by teachers. I will put a little QR code in the bottom corner of, 
especially like longer texts. I'll put a little QR code in the side so that way and you know, people can scan that, students can scan that and listen to the audio text stuff if it's a little more challenging. Um, so if something is a little above grade level, again, social studies, science, those are perfect areas where you can use this, this app and create that QR code and then stick it over there in the corner of a text just so the kids can listen to that audio text, okay? Any questions so far? Um, any questions? If you have questions, please uh, ha don't hesitate to ask. And if there's something that you want to privately message me about, you can use the Q&A, especially if you want to go into something in a little more detail. I can hold a webinar. Any of these things, I'm sure that we could probably do an entire half an hour or, or longer um, on each one of these things. So I'm just kind of breezing through just to give you some ideas and you can explore a little more. Okay. Um, okay, so now let's jump over to some of the Google uh, extensions and apps. So these are in Chrome. So Google Chrome, you can install these different um, um, extensions. So extensions, basically, uh, you can see up here on the right side of my screen. So you do need to make sure that you're using Google Chrome. Um, you can install these, um, these extensions. So there's a few different ones that I have installed. Um, I actually have a ton. But for, for, for us, for tonight, I just took some of them off there so they're not so confusing. So I just want to show you a couple of them. So the first one that I think we'll, uh, that we'll talk about is, um, it's, called, it's called Speak It. Um, let me go back a second. Let me show you where you would get those. Okay, so if you click on, um, if you just go to Google and you type in um, Google extensions, actually you can just get them in the, the App Store as well. Um, uh, it's called the Chrome Web Store. So if I click there, up here in the top left hand corner it says search the store you can actually search these extensions and then it's as simple as there's a little button that says install and then it puts it up here on the right side of your screen okay so the kids have those um, if your district has Chromebooks you probably will need to ask them to install that so it goes to all of the kids okay um, so let me go back so let me just go over here so I just have a Wikipedia page that's probably not the best example ever but I know there's a lot of a lot of text here so this is what we can do with speak it this one I can highlight text, I can right click, and now notice that Speak It is showing up in this list as well. So I can do Speak It, click it. The California Gold Rush, 1848-1855, began on January 24th, 1848, when okay. gold was found by James to stop W. It, you Marshall. Just push this and button up here in the top, okay? And there are some options there as well. So it's the rate, the pitch, the volume, all that good stuff um, is in there as well. So again, this one's super simple. So if you just highlight text, right click, speak it, okay? Um, so that one, very simple to use. And again, you know, if the kids are researching and they're trying to find this information, um, maybe they're having a rough time, you know, especially with some topics, it's so hard for the kids to find information that's that's just right text for, for the kids. So um, this, this has come in handy multiple times for my kids in the last couple of years, okay? And again, all of these things, they are kind of like modifications that we can make for the kids as well. Um, a, lot of, a, lot of these, a lot of these things we have put on, I don't think we put this one on an IEP. However, you know, I, I definitely think it could be possible to do some sort of you know, text to speech um, and you could use this for, to meet, that, to meet that, um, that requirement. Okay, so that one was called speak it. Okay, speak it. Uh, two separate words with an exclamation point. So if you're looking in the, the Chrome store, that's where you're gonna find it. All right, so the next one that we'll use is called um, Announceify. Announceify um, is, um, let me go ahead and click this for you. And it's going to, when you click that one up in the top right hand corner, it's going to take all of that information. You are now listening to California Gold Rush, Wikipedia. For the film, see California Gold Rush, film. The California Gold Rush, 1848, 18. Okay. So the great thing about that one, it's doing the same thing pretty much that Speak It did, but what I really like about that one is that it blurs out everything else. So it takes it chunk by chunk. Again, for those kids who need it the most, differentiating in that in that situation, it's just so much easier. Um, and and I, I think that one is nice because it pulls up a separate page. Um, there's not so much clutter on the page. There's not so much around. It chops off the sides. It's just the actual You are now itself. listening to okay. California Gold So that Rush. is, uh, that is another um, extension that you could use. So it is called Announceify. Announceify. And again, that is a Google extension. Okay. All right. So um, let me go to a couple more. I'm just going to run through a couple more extensions and apps that you could use to help differentiate. So um, I know when my kids are researching, one of the things that, that, um, that I like for them to be able to do is to um, take notes. 
Um, and when they're doing that, sometimes it's a little tricky, um, you know, to have paper in front of them and they have their device and there's, you know, just a lot of clutter. And some of my kids who need it the most can't have that clutter. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on, uh, this is, um, this is called stickies. Um, and it's this little thing here. And I wish that it was like an actual, like a little post-it or something, but it's not, it's just this little circle here. So I'm going to click on that and it says, um, add new sticky. And so it opens up, um, just a little post-it. And what I can do now is I can start writing inside of that. So if the kids are, you know, they're researching the California gold rush, uh, they're searching, they're researching that they can chop in, uh, go ahead and put in notes. Now, the great thing is there's this little pin and this is, this is the best feature about this. Um, it's going to keep that post-it. It's going to keep that post-it no matter where they go. So it's just basically over top of your web browser. So for example, I do need to click on that. Yep. Okay. So I pinned it. So now I'm going to go ahead and the kids are reading through this information and they go to, um, okay. So they want to find out a little bit more about actually what gold is, right? So they click on gold and notice that my post-it is still there. Okay. So that's, um, that's a really simple way for me to, um, to keep those, um, and on each one of the pages. So the kids are, so the kids are writing that information and they have it there with them the entire time. Um, so that is a really great tool to use. It's called Stickies. It's S-T-I-C-K-I-E-S. -I -E um, and that is an extension as well. Okay. All right. So I'm going to trash that. Okay. All right. The next one I'm going to go to is a, um, okay. So the next one is called uh, Calmly. This is a Google app. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to click on apps. Um, you would, again, you would get this from the same place. You would get it from the store. Um, this is free as well. It's called Calmly. And um, I think the really great thing about this is a, a lot of the things that we use, even if it's online, even if it's Word or, um, you know, if it's Google Docs, there's a lot of features all over the place, which I know is a little tough for my kids to, a little tough for my kids to, um, uh, to, to get over. So there's just so many features that it's a little overwhelming. So calmly, if you click on that, notice what happens here. I'm just going to open this up and this is going to, I hope you can still see this. Um, this is going to open up. You can see um, it's just a blank page, so the kids can start writing in here. Then, if they're ready to bring it into, you know, maybe Google Docs, they can copy and paste that information and bring it back in. Okay, so that is something that um, this is called Calmly, um, uh, Calmly Writer. It is free, just a way for the kids to not have so many distractions there. Okay. Okay. All right. I think. Oh, you know, there was one more that I wanted to show you as well. So the kids do have. Um, um, we do give all of our kids. Uh, the option to highlight. So this one is called uh, Super Simple Highlighter. And this is an extension as well. And it's this little guy right up here in the top right hand corner. Um, so it says uh, there's a few different options here. You don't need to turn these on. Um, they're usually, you know, they're there for you. So if the kids are on this page and, you know, they're like, oh, you know what, this is really important information. So they're actually going to select it, right click it. And now there's that little, uh, the little button here that says Super Simple Highlighter. And let's highlight that in yellow. So now that's highlighted and we're good to go, okay? Um, so the kids can go throughout that entire page and, um, and, and highlight the important information that they need. Now, the great thing about this one is this. Let me show you this. So I am going to um, open up a new tab here. I'm gonna go to the super simple highlight little button up here. I'm gonna click on that. Now, this is the coolest part. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Hang on one second. Um, I think it's in options. Yes. Okay. So now in options on this device, let's say that, you know, the kids come back to this the next day and um, they come back to it the next day and they're like, well, I don't remember where I was yesterday when I highlighted everything. The great thing about this one is that you can click on pages and it gives you the link. It gives you the link of where the kids researched yesterday and what they highlighted. So it's there for you. They can click on that. It opens it back up and it highlights the exact same things that were highlighted previously. Um, so that one I think is, is a really cool tool for the kids to use. Um, and, um, it just makes it, you know, I can't tell you how many times, and this has probably happened to everybody, right? So you're researching and then, you know, the kids are like, well, I remember it saying this and I'm like, okay, where did you find that information? Let's, you know, cite it or, uh, you know, we need to know where it was. And they're like, I don't remember. So then it's, you know, trying to go back and find that information again. So this is a really nice way for the kids to actually just have it. Um, digitally stored for them. I mean, the only thing they need to do is just highlight something on that page and it's going to store it for them. Okay. 
Okay. All right. So I know that was that was a lot of uh, a lot of information, but I mean these are these are definitely things. They're just little things, and you know you don't need to use all of them, but little things that can help you differentiate in the classroom just to get the year started here. And I would definitely say you know there are a few of these that I use on a daily basis that my kids use on a daily basis, and some of them that you know we don't use as often, but at least it's a tool to have there. Okay. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, I do want to go back over, go back over to the, uh, let's see here. I just want to show you this. Um, I'm going to leave this up here for a couple of seconds. So um, just as a thanks for joining us, I'm just going to give you something that you can download for your classroom. So um, if you uh, scan the QR code over on the left-hand side or use that link on the bottom left-hand side, um, these are some reading bookmarks that I use in my classroom. So there's different strategies and uh, reading strategies on there. Um, there are some that are, you know, point of view, theme, main idea, and they're actually bookmarks. So the kids can keep them inside of their books and they can just jot things down as they, as they read. So, um, just as a thank you for joining us. And, um, if you have any questions, let me know. You can put it in the Q and A, or if you need to, um, if you, if you would like to email me, you can do that too. My email address is Dan Malt, D-A-N-M-A-U-L-T at gmail.com. Um, if you, um, if you are, you know, trying some of these things out and you're not quite sure what I was talking about or how to use them, by all means, go ahead and, 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 um, you know, let me know and I'll help you. You can also get me on Facebook and that might be the quickest way to, to, um, to get at me is, is coming over to the Facebook, Mr. Maltz marketplace and then, uh, messaging me in there. Okay. Thanks for joining. Uh, thanks for joining us. And, um, I hope to see you. I just added a bunch more webinars. There's a few more in the next couple of weeks. Uh, so um, hopefully you uh, join us again. Thanks so much. Have a good night.